Super Doomspire's latest update is going to be the last for a while. It also includes quite a bit of content. In today's video, we are going to go through said content. This update has a lot to unpack, so let's get into it. Some of the best features I think in the 71520 update that I should note are massive debuffs, such as lunging, strike damage, and more. You can definitely tell that Polly and Wheat took tons of effort into this update. There's also the new weapon, Crystal Blaster, which yes, I have tested out and will do a review on this video. From the little things in this update, such as cooldowns, and yes, unfortunately, the shutting down slash archiving of the Discord server that I should mention will be mentioned in this video. Although it's been a fun ride on this game, both Polly and Wheat say that they're burnt out from working on the game, which is why the server is now archived for a little while. Maybe it's just because this update has so much content, it's unreal. In today's video, we will be going over the 71520 Super Doomspire update and reviewing the brand new weapons, debuffs, and other changes that I should let you guys know about in the developer log. Let's get started. Yo, what's up, Hash Trainer Squad, and welcome back to another video. But before we get started in this video, don't forget to subscribe for this Roblox drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. Don't forget to turn on the bell so that way you never miss out on one of my videos which are uploaded weekly to twice a week. In today's video, we'll be going through the new Super Doomspire update. Firstly, we are going to review the new weapon, the Crystal Blaster. Then, we are going to review all the debuffs and changes. Finally, we are going to review the new lava map and new lava music. And then from there, we can make a conclusion on whether this is a great update or not. We will also be talking about the SDS Discord server shutdown. Let's get started with our first point, which is the Crystal Blaster Weapon Review. The Crystal Launcher's description reads, A short-range rocket that explodes after a short time. After trying out the weapon in what is known as Polly's Corner, otherwise the testing servers, and this week's testing livestream, the weapon fires in bursts. It works similarly to the laser cannon in comparison. If you use your rockets for a more KO type style, definitely an offensive type tactic, this would be the item that you are able to suitable for. Here's my livestream played back in slow motion. As you can see, for the firing shots, the rocket fires one shot with, I guess, a rhombus atmosphere? The shots are kind of like a skinny rocket in a sense. However, I believe the perk about this rocket is that its firing rate is extremely fast. As mentioned by a viewer in my live stream, the firing rate is great for lunge type combos, which can probably abrogate the debuffs of the latest update because lunge is negative 35 as well as speed. Plus, its damage is increased by two times, so when discharging the weapon, its impact damage is pretty good. Notwithstanding its iffiness, I guess if you can call it that, with construction and buildings, as its blast radius is decreased by 10%, and that's understandable to combat the other perks of this weapon. The 10% blast does make a lot of a difference, however, when firing spawns off and not in a good way. When using this weapon, even so, I found that it would instantly KO a player, which is great for more offensive players on the battlefield, as mentioned previously. This is good for the close type hits when quick switching. The negative 33% reload time makes a huge difference, especially with this update's new timers. It's good for those little quick shots, if you know what I mean. As mentioned in our best weapons video, this would probably go in class A, the lightest class. It is not a medium weapon as of its short range, and it's definitely more in partisan the lighter side because of its fast shots but slow range. After using this weapon, although it isn't for myself, I definitely see the benefits in purchasing it. It does not rank to a legendary, but I will give it a letter rating. I rate this weapon in terms of B plus of overall statistics. In terms of fast firing, this is an A plus if you are a faster light on your feet type player. Construction damage, C minus. It's not the best for more brick type players like me, which by the way, most Briggs VIP was also added in this update. This is unfortunately why I had to take some points off. Therefore, it's definitely a good weapon and you can't expect the best from a 4 star weapon, but it's definitely one of the best 4 star rockets I've ever played with. Mechanics are smooth, firing rate is amazing, which is probably the best perk of this weapon, and the construction damage may be buffed in a later update, which we'll be talking about in a later point. 
On to the debuffs. Let's go through the entire change log together and I'll give my thoughts on it. Starting with the featured page in the shop now updates daily. This was a great update as often you'd have to go around the time of day to get a certain item. Now, because I have 24 hours to do so, I don't have to keep constantly checking. Certain items you can also save for in one day too, so I appreciate that the developers did that, because hourly was simply way too fast and you'd miss a lot of items. Although, I am wondering, will this have a change on collectability? They did add new stickers after all, which leads us to our next point, 24 stickers brand new. This puts the stickers at over 300. I personally collected all the stickers and it's nice to see that there's some new refreshing stickers. And yes, after checking today, they even added the let's heckin' go meme. Some of these artists include Dankers and more. I'm really glad that Super Doom Spire's best features are featuring artists. It really helps them outsource their work. The new stickers are kind of just new memes and new team member lore, to be honest. On to our next point, the lava map. New lava map music by Zumul. I really like this lava music and I think it's fantastic, so I have it playing in the background of this segment. It gives off real Super Mario type vibes in which the lava map was updated too. Great job to Simul, the music artist on this one, I'll put her link in the description for SoundCloud. Lava now sends you flying upwards with a burn instead of destroying character parts. I think this is one of the best and biggest changes so far to the game maps. The lava map has changed quite a bit, with instead of flat lava, the lava now moves in a slinky-like formation. There is a new burn effect which is paired along with the last one, which is visual indicators. It's honestly really helpful to know what effect is affecting your character, and it's a lot easier to read visual cues. Next, finally, mobile players have an advantage. We did it. Added a new camera lock setting for mobile and Xbox players, which functions similarly to Roblox shift lock features. I'm going to show off this feature real quick. It's great. It works similarly to shift lock, so our camera wasn't all wonky like last time. Thank you, Doom Squires. This finally makes playing fair, which a lot of people were complaining about. Works fluid, smooth, and great. Next up, you can toggle sticker patches on and off tools. This disables their effect, and they also added more stuff, which that's good for performance. Let's move on to changes. Added cooldown indicators to the toolbar, similar to the first one. When in first person, tools are actually now transparent. Assists give full KO credit. However, the kill feed will only show who actually landed the KO. This is great because I would often have someone steal my kills afterwards. Fixed a bug where players couldn't build infinitely in the lobby, causing lag. Finally, RIP my iPhone 6. Fixed a bug where lava wouldn't award KOs properly. They also fixed a bug where players who crossed on the enemy's side and round cat rally stayed alive. When moving the thumbstick on mobile, the sidebar now disappears. That's really convenient because I found with like a small phone, it was very hard to actually pay attention to the game and not accidentally like open the shop or something like that. If you tie with someone for the NBC slot, but if your team won and there's lost, you will override them in the slot. They added more bridges to the jungle map and increased the size of tree ridges. They widened the bright bridges in the ruins map. Okay, so next up is our tools. New tool is the crystal blaster. Balances and tweaks. The crystal blaster is a B plus as stated before. I think it's a decent weapon, especially for a four star. Explosive tools now have a minimum damage cap, which should make them more consistent damage wise. I use explosive tools a lot personally, so I'm very glad this happened. Sometimes it would kind of tweak out and bomb kills were very hard to get though. They're still hard to get, but less. Tweaked a lot of tool rarities to favor legendary less. This really sets distinct levels in the game. Shadow Bomb's jump nerf decreased to minus 10% from minus 33%, but they also can't be planted now. The Shadow Sit is often used as an overpowered sweat. Quote end quote, I'm also glad this change was made as it needed massive debuffs. Laser cannon shots are now actually consistent. If you hit someone with the home runner special move, you'll now get the new batter up buff, which gives 10 seconds of 150% walk speed. I definitely agree that the home runner was very much bad, in the sense that it was very easy to dodge, especially by lighter players. Although it is a more skilled weapon, this will make it a lot easier for modes such as infection. However, I'm personally a fan user, I know it sounds cheap, so I'm glad that happened. When placing constructions over their build limit, such as ball turrets and tambourines, the first one you placed will get destroyed instead of getting a message and being unable to place a new one. Mobile devices would also have lag, so I'm also glad that's fixed. Lung damage decreased to 35. This was probably one of the changes I was really sad about in this update. I personally avoid using heavier weapons. However, I do understand why they did this to balance the mobility mechanics. 
Strike damage decreased to 45. Oof, now that's a big one. That's going to be quite a large blow for an infection. Obviously, infection is in the survivor's favor, but zombies often have a hard time with that. Maybe that might change that. Increased base lunge cooldown. For me, it was 2 seconds. This, again, has to do with mobility. Increased power corns range and damaged. Fixed brick breaker not giving credit for fallout KOs. Increased shadow shuriken's time to plus 15% from minus 13%. Percent. Added plus 30 bomb jump to arm cannon, and I don't have much to say about those. Overall, yeah, that was a lot to say. Let's move on to our conclusion. Super Doom Aspire's Discord server was recently archived, which means it's not going to be deleted, support is not ending like a lot of people are saying. The Discord server is just shutting down because it's too much work for the mods and the developers to handle. I'll read you this message from the developer Polyhex, who is also known for making Super Bomb Survival. Hi everyone, thanks so much for playing Super Doom Spire and for participating in the community. As of today, we're going to archive this server. Super Doom Spire is a pretty big game for us, but I'm burnt out from working on it and none of us really here have time to work on games and manage the community at the same time. You might have noticed the devs and mods have been stepping back for a while. There will be community servers for sure, and I'd recommend checking out places like the unofficial Super Doom Inspire wiki to find full of players and information about the game. The time has come for the official server to shut down, though. You can still hit us up for feedback on Roblox, follow our accounts to send us messages or Twitter. For now, I'm going to take a break, but I'll still be updating the game to fix any issues that pop up. It's not unlikely that I'll return to it for more updates in the future. I'll be leaving the server archive instead of deleting it so you can save things or use the emoji in other servers. Thanks for playing Super Doom Spire. I hope you'll keep playing and check out what we make in the future. I've been really happy about how y'all have helped shape the game's growth and mechanics, and I'm sure we'll keep it growing from there. But to be clear, a lot of people have fears and rumors that the SDS official support is going to shut down. It is not going to shut down, as they said in that message. What I believe is going to happen is the developers are going to take a break for a good five months or so, meaning the game won't fizzle out entirely, but the developers definitely need a break. They worked so hard in this update, and I give them props to this update. This overall update, I definitely rate an 8 out of 10. Some updates I obviously don't like because, you know, it affects me, but I do understand the reason for these updates. SDS's actual official server, although it's gone, we can still appreciate the memories from there. Tanuki Town, we talk about SDS a lot, but we're not really sure on what's going to happen for the game's future. It is going to be optimistic, and I'm sure that the game's next update is going to be a great comeback. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe, because this was one of my most heavily edited videos in a while. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.